Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Strategy Game Podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Shippey, and I'm so excited to have my good friend, Leanne Roberts, on the show with us today. Um, Leanne, tell us a little bit about um, just who you are, where you come from. Leanne and I live really close to each other. Our kids are in school together, so we know each other personally. But just for the audience, give us a little bit of your backstory. Absolutely. Well, I feel like it was fate that we were put together, right? Our daughters became friends and then we became friends and then we started working together. And I mean, it just all kind of fell into place so perfectly. Uh, But my name is Leanne Roberts and I am the founder of Mama Crush Marketing. And I have had this desire to help women, especially moms like me, busy moms, Um, that have a business that are just trying to do their best to get it up and going or feeling stuck and helping them with their marketing. Uh, Because really all of our revenue and our efforts and everything all stems from our marketing and our marketing strategies. And so that's where I began with marketing with Mama Crush Marketing, but I've been in the marketing game for over 20 years. Um, I'm aging myself, but (laughs) since my first was born, I just started, had this like fire to do something on my own, to start my own business. And I've dabbled in a few different things, had some creative businesses. Some have failed, some have succeeded. I sold one business and, um, but I've always, no matter what I was doing, whether it was creating vinyl labels for cups, you know, or, um, or selling clothes. I mean, I did it all. Uh, It all came down to the marketing. And I realized after having all these experiences that that was where my my uh, expertise was. And that's where I enjoyed the most. I loved being on camera and talking to people and getting out in the community and talking to other business owners and other women. And I thought, this is what I need to do, right? So a couple of years ago, I started Mama Crush Marketing. And then um, once I met you and we started talking and realized, gosh, we're really in similar, you know, parallel universes here. Um, You know, we have different approaches. And so then I came on with the marketing engine and started working with you guys. Now we have this awesome new offering, the toolkit, the marketing engine light, and it's uh, going great so far. (laughs) Yeah. It's just so cool. I love, I love your extensive background because I think you've done so many different things. And I love that, like the theme that you saw throughout it all was the importance of the marketing and getting the marketing right, because you can have like the greatest product or service alive But if you don't know how to tell people about it, what channels to use, who your target customer is, all of those things, right, then none of it is going to be worth it. So, um, you know, just an interesting side question here. Anything that you learned from the failure? I always love to ask people what they learn from their failures, because we learn a lot from success and we're seeing that at the marketing engine and it's really awesome and exciting to see and what's, what is working, but what did you learn from the failure that you had in business over the years? I mean, there were so many lessons that I've learned because like I said, I've started, I'm a, I just, I dive into things really quickly and I start businesses and I start things and I get really excited about them. And like I said, the common theme throughout was the marketing and that's where I ended up now and which is the perfect spot for me. But through those failures, through those other things that I started that I got really excited about and thought, oh, this is awesome. And I'm going to make all this money and I'm going to do all these, you know, all the success. I learned that my biggest, I don't want to say limitation, but my biggest um, almost like fault is giving too much sometimes, like not knowing my worth. Um, so I always, I kind of have this soft spot for like someone who can't afford it or someone who, you know, wants a deal and I want to give that deal to them, or I just want to give so much that I hurt my bottom line in the long run. So I guess really it's, it's finances, like finances are not my specialty. (laughs) And so that side of it, knowing that I am more valuable or what I'm offering is more valuable than what I'm selling it for was a really hard lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to be that nice person and that, you know, who gives you a deal or gives you the extra services for free or throws it in. And I still, I have to stop myself now. Even now I sell, my service is a higher ticket item. And, you know, I do for for Mama Crush Marketing, it's a coaching service and, or I'm creating websites and those are higher ticket items. And I have a hard time stopping myself from like, oh, well, I'll also throw in this and I'll also throw in that. 
So that's been a real tough lesson. Um, and I'm still learning, you know, I'm still growing with that. So I can there's a lot of lessons I've learned over these. <laughs> totally relate to that. I feel like when I started story work, I was in a very similar boat where I just didn't realize until I did it over and over and over again, how valuable it was or the impact that it was having on people. And once I started to realize that, you know, then it really came to life, but it takes a while and it does impact your bottom line. So that's, that's so true. And then for this, it's the totally sale, a mindset thing, right? We, we think I have this great service that I know other people are offering. So what can make me stand out? Well, I'm less expensive, right? right? Or I offer all these extra bonuses. But really, you're discounting yourself and you're discounting your service and the value of what you do by doing that. I know the first time that I raised my rates on creating a website for someone and I'm talking to the woman. She totally needed what I was doing. She was so into it. She loved what I've already created. Yeah. I already had her in, the, you know, like as a client, basically. Right. And when I, when it came time to tell her how much this service was going to be, and I had just raised my rates to what is pre pretty standard now in the industry, yeah. I was so nervous to say that number out loud, right? And once I said it, and she said, okay. Right. And I was <laughs> like, what? Was like in my mind, I thought, oh my gosh, I could have asked for more, you know? <laughs> so it really is such a mindset. And I feel like as business Business owners, we really have to learn, like you said, like kind of have that aha moment, like, oh, what I do is really valuable. And it's not the price that makes me doubt. It's not that, you know, it's not that I'm less expensive than anyone else. It's that I am really darn good at what I do and yeah. I can really, really help you. Yeah. And that's what it makes you different. And then the experience that the customer has. So so good. So I'll get good. off of that so far there. You no, know, that was really good though. And I think it's an important lesson that a lot of entrepreneurs are learning in the first, I would say like five years, right? Like oh, as yeah. you said, like starting and overcoming and iterating and all those things. So I think it's just a really important topic to address. Now, when it comes to the sale of the business for you, any lessons stand out there in that success? Um, probably the same thing. I probably should have asked for more money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right. um, no, it was a, a right opportunity. Um, it was just, I was segueing into another role and um, into a larger role in what I was doing. And it, it was just the right opportunity that came along. Um, I wasn't even really in the market to sell my business. I was still enjoying what I was doing. This was my clothing company, the, the boutique that an online boutique that I had, yeah. and I was still really enjoying it. And it was really taking off. Um, I think that one lesson that I learned is I probably should have just the course a little longer because it was gaining so much momentum and somebody swooped in and said, oh, I'll take that off your hands. And I thought, okay, great. And then I get this little cash influx. Great. But really, if I would have stuck with it, I think it would have actually grown and been even more successful um, because I was just then getting really good at it. <laughs> so. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So it's like knowing that timing, right? When it when it's mm -hmm. time to sell. Yeah. Don't we all wish we had a Christmas? You know, in the end, it all worked out. I mean, it all led to who I am now. And so it's yeah. great. And my husband was tired of having racks and racks of clothing in our throughout our house, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it was time to move on. <laughs> you can imagine that helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to the marketing engine um, toolkit that we've really put together, this is just exciting. I just want to tell everybody the story here because it is a really cool story. You know, like Leanne is, you know, has been on on our team, the marketing engine team, and it's just a really awesome, diverse team from all over uh, the world. We have some people overseas and. Uh, we gather every Tuesday to give updates and have our team meetings, which are great. And um, just it's cool to see what everybody is doing and the roles that they're playing um, in that space. And so, you know, with Leanne, we just got talking and I knew that, you know, you had led many workshops and you had coached many people and you had, um, you know, your own business. And we, we have the marketing engine and their retainer clients. And, you know, it's more substantial. It's, it's larger organizations that really need that consistent 
marketing presence, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs or even teams or maybe nonprofits that just need an audit to their marketing and they need just kind of a refresh or a reset. You're feeling stuck or not really knowing where to go, or you just don't have the time to do it because you're operating in the business and you don't have time to work on the business, you know, that kind of thing. And so we just got talking about it. And it seemed like really a lot of like what you had and what I had, we were able to kind of like marry those things together and develop this toolkit. So now that we've we've been doing this, can you tell us just a little bit about like what that process has been like and uh, what it's been like for you and any just discoveries, you know, for the clients too? Because it's a really cool. Absolutely. So when you approached me about this idea about the marketing engine light, or we call it the toolkit as well, um, like you said, marketing engine is, it's like hiring your own marketing department and, you know, having them on retainer every month and bigger businesses, medium to large businesses are able to do that sort of thing and take advantage of this amazing service that we have. And like you said, there's an, this great team of people and all different aspects of marketing and they get it all in one big bundle. Um, and so that's fantastic for these medium to large size businesses, but my wheelhouse, like mama crush marketing itself is all about the solopreneur, the mompreneur, the entrepreneur, the small business owner who just has a small team around them. That's been my wheelhouse. That's where I have um, specialized. And so when you came to me with this idea, I thought, well, that's what I do. This is great. You know? And so it's a way for someone to get all of the advantages of the marketing engine, but just kind of deliver to them and put into their hands and say, okay, here's how we do it. Now you can go do it. And it's been such a, a neat experience so far. The clients we've had have been so receptive and so excited to get all of this. It, sometimes I think it's a little bit of overwhelm, right? Because they go from just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and like trying to keep up with whatever marketing efforts they have. You know, maybe they're doing something on Instagram today and they're sending it out an email next month, but it's very random and it's very sporadic. It's very reactive is what it is too. It's not marketing so a true. marketing strategy. It's more like a marketing reaction. Like, oh, yeah. I need to get on there and do that. And, you know, so when we have a new marketing engine, like client come in and we hand them all of this stuff and they get a couple of coaching calls with me and I sit down with them and I say, here's what I'm giving you. Here's how to do it. Here's how to work through it. And here's how to, you know, and it's, a, it's a, it's about a four to six week process to really get to a marketing strategy up and running with the toolkit. Yeah. They can go as fast or as slow as they want, but that's really what I, you know, what I suggest. And as they're going through it, they're like having these aha moments, like, oh, I see why I'm supposed to, you know, write down my user personas or, oh, I see what a funnel is now. And, oh, I see why I need to send out an email of once a month or once a week or whatever it is. And so giving them all those tools is so exciting because that is like, that's what lights me up is getting somebody unstuck from, yes. from that that whole feeling of like being on a hamster wheel and not really knowing what they're doing. Like, yeah, I do marketing, right. As an entrepreneur, like, yeah, I, I do marketing I'm on Instagram and I post and I, you know, I go to a networking event here and there and I talk to people or I ask people for referrals or reviews, but really there's no long overall strategy for long-term success there. And, you know, they're just kind of getting those one hits and off, you know, one-offs and yeah. instead when they get all of this delivered to them, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Okay. <laughs> and, they yeah. and once they start doing it, it's so exciting to watch the aha moments. I can think of one client in particular who every week when I check in with her, because I do, a, you know, I hold the person accountable, the team accountable, and I check in with her and she's like, oh, I did that. And wow, I applied it. And you're right. It looks so much better this way. Or I know I'm going to attract the right people. And then we also have the clients that are, you know, they get it and say, Oh, oh gosh, I didn't realize I was supposed to do all this. You know? wow. and, um, uh, well, I've also got to work and I've also got to take care of my family and, and it can be a little overwhelming, but it really and truly what we've created with this toolkit is taking everything that the marketing engine does for these medium to large size businesses and hands it to the small business and says, if you want to get there, right? If you want to be this medium to large size business and you yeah. want to have the long-term success, this is what you have to do. I mean, this is where you should start. You're going to be ahead of the game if you do it that way. That's so, right. It's been really fun and really exciting and we're getting new clients. And I mean, I have a really good time getting to know the people. And yeah. like I said, that unstuck, you know, when the puppies is all fit together, they all, 
Oh, yes. okay. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's so exciting. Yep. It's a light bulb moment. And what's so cool about that is that, you know, to that end, getting to know the people and really over time creating and building a community so that they don't have to go it alone either. They'll be part of the engine community, you know, that we're building here. So I think that'll be, you know, it's a really important part of it because then they have voices, all of our voices as a team being able to pour into them or troubleshoot or help problem solve or all of those great things. So a lot of things that you said there, I think probably a lot of entrepreneurs or solopreneurs listening can relate to being on the hamster wheel, just not having enough time, um, feeling stuck, all of those things are so common and they come in waves, you know? So as an entrepreneur, you might feel like you've got it together for a little bit and then you might fall off because you got busy doing this, right? Or you might feel like you have a plan and then your plan isn't relevant anymore because your products or services have shifted because that happens a lot as an entrepreneur. So being able to iterate on that and shift and get the reset you need and get the plan you need to be able to drive growth, revenue growth in your business is really key. So I love, love all of that. Um, as we wrap up here today, just, I had asked Leanne, just any thoughts on just advice uh, for entrepreneurs that maybe they can just start to apply right away. Like any, any top tips that come to mind for you? Absolutely. So one thing about the way I provide service to my clients and is I'm very tactical. Um, I don't just say, you know, give you the big idea and say, here, run with it. If you need to know how to create something, you know, a graphic in Canva or how to add a lead magnet page to your website, I'm there for you. I, I know the tech side, so I can, because I've done it all myself multiple times and yeah. learned all of that. And so I'm very hands-on with my clients and I'm very like, Oh, you're stuck. This is where you're stuck. You just feel like you don't know how to record a video. Like, let me come to you and let me turn on the camera for you, or let me, you know, talk you through it and walk you through it. So I like to be very tactical. And so some of the tips that I could say is a couple of things. First, for an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, maybe if you have like one person helping you, but basically you're a tiny team, right? And many times it's just yourself is to keep it simple at first. Mm -hmm. So when you are starting to create your marketing strategy, you don't have to be everywhere, all the places, all the time. A big benefit of being with the marketing engine, these medium to bigger size businesses, and it's not to say that an entrepreneur can't be with the marketing engine. It's just yeah. uh, once you're at that revenue point where you can uh, afford a team you know, with you every month, that team, we're a big team and we can be everywhere. You know, we can be on every social media platform. We can be in emails. We can be getting, you know, we can get you PR. We can do all these different things. But when you're an entrepreneur, you really have to look at it and say, okay, what can I, what's my bandwidth, right? Like what can I really and truly do on my own and be successful at? So I always recommend three things. When you start with a marketing strategy at the very beginning, or you're just auditing it and trying to make sure you're doing it right, your website site and SEO falls under that, which is a little scary sounding to a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, but your website, your email marketing strategy, and your social media strategy, but even break it down further, your social media strategy, pick one platform, mm -hmm. pick one platform where you know your audience is, or where you get the most engagement or the most reactions and get really, really good at it. Put all your efforts there and into email and into your website. Pick those three things and keep it really simple because then it's it's like in bite-sized pieces, right? Then it seems manageable because as a solopreneur, somebody who doesn't have a team around her, if you tell me I have to be on six different platforms and also send emails and also don't forget to send out some PR you know, inquiries and also try to get on these podcasts and also try, it's much. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to freeze and I'm either going to freeze or I'm going to be super inconsistent and just like throwing things out randomly yes. or instead if you're intentional and you're just choosing three places to be at the beginning anyway and you're just choosing these three places to be it seems more manageable and you can do it you can set yourself up with the calendar and with this yeah. strategy and a plan and and it will be manageable and that way too if the wheels fall off one week because <laughs> we are people right yes. then it's yes. not as big of a deal if one little thing gets left off that week right because you only have these three things and you're also going to set up systems for those three things so that you can 
so that they are done, right? That's those yep. are the three priorities for your marketing. Those three things have to get done every week or every month, whatever it is. Um, everything else that you do is just icing on the cake. So mm -hmm. I have a particular client right now that I'm working with, and she these you know these three things I told her are your three priorities. It's her website, her email, and her, her Instagram. That's where her client base is, her Instagram. And I, I said in the Instagram, when I say your this is your base, like I just want you to schedule or batch out like some posts and things. Anything you do extra, stories, reels, all that stuff, that's just icing on the cake. That's but that's not your priority, right? So here's your priorities. Then as you grow, um, as you scale and maybe you hire a person to help you, that's when you can start branching out. And you're gonna find that too, if you set up the systems for these three things and you do them for a while, it gets easier. And then you say, okay, now I have a little space to add in another platform or to try to start getting some PR or um, or start going to networking groups and things like that. So I would say just keep it simple, as simple as you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really good, Leanne, because I do think that we can see all of these shiny new objects or here's a new platform or here's reels or here's a different tool or way to do this. And then we can get excited about that and maybe get off track. So the greatest thing I think we can do is to stay focused on the simple plan that we have created as entrepreneurs. So that's really, really good advice. And I'm going to link to in the show notes, the website audit checklist and the social media content calendar, because what Leanne was talking about, she's, we've created guides for free guides. So I'm going to link to those in the show notes. So you guys can click through and download those if you want to get started on your plan. And we'll also link to the landing page for the marketing engine toolkit if this is something you need and want to do and want to work with leanne so that you can get started on it so leanne thanks so much for joining us this was so great and i can't wait to share it thank you so much for having me and i just i'm really excited for all the entrepreneurs solopreneurs and small business owners out there and if we can help you get unstuck in any way it is what lights me up and i would be really excited to help awesome <laughs>